What's up, beautiful people? And welcome back to another comic book review video where I say words and you, the magically, blah, 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 the magically delicious, listen. It is I, your crazy Nicolas Cage, your steward of Gondor, your genius, billionaire playboy, basic YouTuber philanthropist, Supercliff. And would you kindly hit that like and subscribe button for every little bit helps in this majestic YouTube world. And today, folks, we are back at it with the continuation of Marvel's Master of Kung Fu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chang Chi, issue number one, written by Jean Luen Yang and drawn by Dyke Ron. And without further ado, let's get weird. As our story begins sometime in the near future, where both Chang Chi and his sister Esma, aka Sister Dagger, are about to combat the wall crawler himself, Spider Man. But wait just one minute. Because aren't Chang and Spidey like kung fu buddies? What could have possibly had driven these two friends to fight one another? Well, hang on to your butts, folks, because we're about to turn back the clocks and travel back in time, hours prior to this terrible situation, where earlier, on this lovely majestic night in the city of New York, the Big Apple, Chang Chi grew a sack of courage, balls of steel, if you will, and is having a romantic dinner date with the lovely Delia Wang, whom Chang met while working the bakery over in San Francisco during last year's Chang Chi miniseries. And while young love blossoms, Chang unfortunately keeps getting interrupted by Sister Dagger's texts regarding a tried drug runner whom she's chasing. Because remember guys, ever since Chang has taken over control of his father's organization, Chang and his siblings, Sister Dagger and Brother Saber, are dedicated towards undoing their father's evil work, which includes a drug ring that's located right here in New York. So Chang has assigned Sister Dagger to tail the drug runner while he's on a date. Because, you know, he's the Supreme Commander and he can do that. <laughs> but just as Chang is about to get a hero's kiss, they are, they are sadly interrupted by the arrival of the tried runner's face implanted against the restaurant's window. And so basically, as a result of this, Chang ends the date. Once outside, Chang is met with Sister Dagger. And as the two siblings argue about Chang's responsibilities as the, as the Supreme Commander, along with the concept of love being irrelevant, and if when Chang ever decides that he's ready to propagate, therefore the organization will happily provide him with copious amounts of concubines, the triad drug guy in the background begins to wake up. However, the only difference is that this dude's ability to kill has been severely upgraded by some magical root shown within, within his possession. Therefore, as a result, the man develops claws, Yet despite this upgrade, Chang easily kicks the guy's face up. Dagger then searches the man, and she ends up finding a strange spider-like device tagged onto him. And Chang, he recognizes it, knowing just who exactly it belongs to. Now, with Sister Dagger being a bit more violent when dealing with criminals, she begins threatening the man with a knife to his neck. But suddenly, spider webbing steals Dagger's knife. And it's here where the two warriors are met with the arrival of New York's friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. However, Sister Dagger doesn't like it when weirdos who are dressed up in tights steal her shit. <laughs> so she immediately charges to attack. But Chang quickly puts himself in the middle and manages to de-escalate the situation. Now keep in mind, because though Chang and Spidey are friends, Chang tells Dagger to keep it down with the whole weapon society and calling him Supreme Leader. And that's clearly due to the fact that Chang, though he's using his father's organization as a force for good, Everyone knows Chang's dad's a piece of shit. <laughs> and Chang, he just doesn't want to get into it right now. Plus, he's probably embarrassed that him and his siblings were raised in a kung fu cult-like setting. Basically, Chang is trying to look cool in front of his superhero friends. And although Sister Dagger is like, wow, you're embarrassed of me, she reluctantly goes along with it. Sister Dagger, meanwhile, starts threatening the triad once more, demanding the location of the drug ring's headquarters. Now, eventually the guy gives in and reveals that the location is a TCM shop, which stands for Traditional Chinese Medicine. And so, Spider-Man suggests that since the two of them are looking for the same place, perhaps they should team up like old times. But remember, Chang is trying to keep his family's organization away from the superhero life. And so we can see that Chang is being hesitant towards accepting. But Spider-Man insists, like, bro, it will be fun. Trust me, like, it's the least I can do, like, for my old Kung Fu master. Afterwards, our three heroes arrive at the drug ring's location, and as both Spider-Man and Chang-Chi venture around the back, Sister Dagger goes straight through the front door, where she is then greeted by the shop store clerk. Now, Esme, she gets right to the point, telling the old man to cut the charade, because, bro, we know that this place is a front for drugs. Now, in response, the old man, rather than appearing concerned, 
tells Dagger a story when long ago, back when he was in China, when he was a young boy. <laughs> nope, not that kind of story, but still, back when he was still but a young servant boy in the house of a rich and powerful man, his life changed when one afternoon, he came across a carcass of a Yeren, nicknamed the Chinese Yeti. And so the boy brought it back to his master, and from its DNA, he created the Yeren Root. Therefore, under his master's teachings, the old man started a life for himself, right here in New York, with the Yaren Root as the cornerstone of his business. Now, the reason why this man was so fascinated with the Yaren was because the creature looked to him like a man who desired to be an animal, and throughout his life, the man sought to be what he wasn't. And so thanks to his master, Zhang Zhu, Chang Chi and Sister Dagger's father, the storekeeper has been able to fulfill his desires. And it's why the people call him King Wildman. And it's with that, where the seemingly innocent old man jumps at Emmy with bear-like claws. Elsewhere, we pick up with Spidey and Chang as they begin searching the back way of the shop, and the two come across a warehouse filled with people and armed with guards, prepping up large amounts of yarn root, likely to sell the various criminals throughout New York. Now, unfortunately, Spider-Man, he accidentally activates the security alarms, and immediately bullets begin to fly everywhere. But after a session of superhero team-up, our heroes are able to web up the bad guys, just in time for Sister Dagger to call down for her brother. And she tells them that Spider-Man was right about the weapon and drug ring being the same, because the yarn root is both the drug and the weapon, as it's able to turn people into monsters. Now, Spider-Man being friendly and all, he attempts to help the old man back on his feet. But King Wildman tricks Spidey and sticks a yarn root right on the wall crawler's face, turning him into a four-armed monster. And this is where we pick up from the issue's beginning, as we now know the reason and the context as to why Spidey and Chang are fighting. Now, eventually, after a little finesse and brother and sister team up, Chang and his sister manage, manage to subdue Spider-Man, allowing Chang to rip the yarn root right off his face, turning Spider-Man back to his normal self. And so, as Chang is helping Spider-Man get back on his feet, Sister Dagger tells Chang that all these crates bear the insignia of the Five Weapon Society. Basically, everything here was developed by their group. Now, Spider-Man hears this and is like, wait, what? Chang, bro, what are you not telling me, dude? But Chang is like, don't worry about it. It's trivial matters. But this pisses off Sister Dagger. And Emmy, she rips Chang a new one, telling him to screw off. And that she's tired of his actions because she feels like Chang is ashamed of his family, ashamed of her. Chang Chi then decides to say, fuck it, and starts to reveal everything to Spider-Man, telling Spidey that he's the new leader of, of his father's organization. And as Chang is giving Spidey the rundown, Sister Dagger's warriors come down through the roof and begin to confiscate the place and purge the Yaren root from further usage. Eventually, once the last of the root has been disposed of, Chang Chi begins to head out with his warriors. But before he leaves, Spider-Man asks him a question, wondering if he's still one of us, one of the heroes. And Chang responds, what does your spider sense tell you? And it tells him nothing. And it's with that where Chang Chi takes off. Next, we pan over to King Wildman, who's running from rooftop to rooftop across Chinatown. And he's pissed, for his life's work has been destroyed in just one night. Everything has been dismantled. And as all hope seems to be lost for this villain, he's eventually greeted by some unknown individual, someone who's cloaked in shadow, and is offering King Wildman a pathway to revenge. Ooh, spooky. Chang Chi, issue number one was a fun start to this new era for Marvel's martial artists. I think the thing I love about this comic is the fact that Chang Chi, though he may not be as popular as Spider-Man, Wolverine, etc., bro has been part of the universe for some time now. And with that, Chang has a reputation. He has history with some of our favorite characters, such as the case here with Spidey. And Jean Lu and Yang makes great callbacks to when Chang taught Spider-Man Kung Fu. It's a great way to help new readers who aren't particularly familiar with the character to get familiar along with how Chang is depicted with interacting with some of Marvel's A-list heroes. In addition, Yang uses Chinese mysticism to great effect. With the whole magical root plotline, it's a great way to explore Asian folklore, whilst providing a fun way for both Chang and Spidey to fight one another, and not having it end up like Civil War, because that's depressing. The art by Dyke Ron was great. I'm definitely a fan of the way he draws Spider-Man, especially when Spidey turns into Goro towards the end. <laughs> cool stuff. Although I don't hate the colors, I do wish that the book did have more color to it. Maybe take some notes from John Wick or Tom Cruise's Collateral and add some neon lighting to the mix. Hopefully color gets a bit more attention in the next issue. But yeah, overall, I'm hyped for this Chang Chi ongoing and I can't wait to see how and why Chang and good old Captain America fight in the next issue. Chang Chi issue number one gets an 8.5 out of 10. Giggity giggity, giggity goo.